attacks on civilians and civilian objects are prohibited even when carried out as reprisals. Reprisals are an old IHL institution applicable to the conduct of hostilities in international armed conflicts. It refers to a tit-for-tat response to a prior violation of IHL, with the aim of coercing the author of that violation to comply with IHL. You kill my civilians, I will kill yours. Of course, we can easily see the dangers of that this system of retaliatory justice brings. Vengeful justice may lead to a high level of cruelty into an escalation of violence whereby each belligerent accuses the other of having first breached IHL or of having reacted in a disproportionate manner, justifying an even stronger response. In addition, victims will not be the combatants, but innocent protected persons. On the other hand, reprisal may appear as an effective way of ensuring compliance with IHL. This is particularly the case given the paucity of mechanism for implementing IHL. The result of those conflicting interests is that although no general prohibition of reprisals has ever been codified, states have agreed on prohibitions against specific types of reprisals and have gradually extended the list of prohibited reprisals. Today, the list of reprisals which are prohibited cover all civilians and civilians' objects. More generally, it includes all the persons or objects which are protected against attacks, including, as far as the persons are concerned, the wounded, sick, shipwrecked or prisoners of war, and concerning the objects, cultural objects, works and installations containing dangerous forces. In contemporary IHL, the only areas where reprisals are lawful concern the use of certain weapons or methods of warfare, unless the means or methods in question are prohibited by a specific treaty. In addition, when authorized, reprisals must be exercised in conformity with the following strict conditions. First, the sole purpose is to induce one's adversary to comply with IHL, not, for example, to punish the adversary, and therefore reprisals must cease upon compliance. Second, it must be exercised in last resort when no other means to induce compliance is available. Third, it must be decided at the highest level of authority. And fourth, such exercise must be proportionate to the prior violation. All of this concerns reprisals in international armed conflicts. Reprisals have indeed been classically construed only with respect to interstate relations. There is no regulation of reprisals in non-international armed conflicts. This has given rise to disagreements on the status of reprisals in those types of conflicts. Some argue that their status is unclear, while others, including the RCRC, are more categorical on and argue that they are prohibited. They draw their argument from the absolute terms of the obligation contained in Common Article 3 and Additional Protocol 2, or from the classically exclusive application of reprisals to interstate relations. It is argued that armed groups would also be able to resort to reprisals if they were authorized in non-international armed conflicts. However, governments are clearly opposed to this. In any case, the ICTY has stated several times that reprisals against civilians were prohibited in all types of conflicts. 